Hello everyone, Lord Pasta here, and today we're going to talk about the KSP Kraken Drive, also known as the Stock Warp Drive or a Stock Hyper Drive. This is a mechanical device that is meant to propel an object at incredible speeds, using practically zero power at all. Now, don't get me wrong, I've worked on plenty of my own designs of Kraken Drives. But I have to show you this one right here, which was not designed by me. It was actually designed by Jimmy Russell, and it's called the Jebstein Drive 1.1. So far, it's the most efficient model that I've found for a working Kraken Drive. Now, one of the things that you're going to notice if you try to dip your toes into the metaphorical pool of the Kraken Drive is that none of it makes any sense at all. Half the time, the thing doesn't work when you think it should, and then it would work when you think it shouldn't, and other things like that. Um, or things that you think would make the ship go faster actually make it go slower and vice versa And I think I'm going to try and cover most of what I know about the Kraken Drive So that you can have more success than I have in creating an actual functional version of the device Now you're probably wondering how does this thing work? Well, it's fairly simple the Kraken Drive exploits a bug in the code of KSP this bug is activated when one part of a ship is pressed up against another part of a different ship. This is usually achieved by using some type of strut or a wheel within a confined space on a separate craft that is detached from its mother craft. Now if you're anything like me, just watching this footage from Jimmy Russell will make you beam with excitement over all the possibilities that this device seems to offer. But really, it's not that great. As I'm about to show, there are way too many limitations to make these things practical. Let's take a look at my small version of the Kraken Drive. Notice the mono nozzle RCS ports at the bottom around the mushroom shaped structural part. This is the point of contact between the probe on the inside and the rest of the craft on the outside. In addition to holding the probe rather snugly, they also provide a unique protection against the damages that can be caused by going at time warp with two crafts that are near each other. These parts have the unique property of being able to teleport and hold something in place when we are at time warp, which is really unique and I didn't know that about these parts. To prepare the Kraken Drive, one must decouple the probe. Here you can see the probe is attached to a docking port right there. It is now detached. I will now proceed to extend the landing gear. They will press against the probe, causing the thrust effect. I have tested this lone device many times before. The ascension is always very slow at the start. This is to be expected with crack and drive designs. This will remain the same until you reach about 300 meters, at which point you will either 1. begin to travel at immense speed without doing anything, or 2. you will then realign your gears by pressing G, waiting a few seconds, and then pressing G again, and then you will increase your speed immensely. Here I am about to do just that. My speed has failed to increase on its own, so I press G to reset the gears. Here you can see me accelerating at a great speed. This will continue, but it will add a level of instability. Now that the craft is in a stable position, let's take a look at the thrust produced by the Kraken Drive. The thrust appears to be at a random rate, as indicated by the g-force meter. This craft is currently approaching a height above Kerbin, or I assume any other body, at which the Kraken Drive will become inoperable. The reason that this occurs is unclear. As you can see, the g-force meter has dropped significantly and I'm no longer changing my speed. The thrust is over. Kraken Drives are interesting. Instead of scaling up in thrust with the amount that you use, the thrust is constant no matter how many devices you have. 
In fact, the more devices, the more likely that it is that the Kraken drive will fail. Kraken drives seem to produce the same amount of thrust, no matter how much mass is attached to them. However, they do have a maximum threshold of mass that they can withstand before they ultimately fail and explode. For my device, this is 2.8 tons. Here we can see what happens when a Kraken drive is overtaxed with mass. Here I have 15 large SAS modules, and the device explodes. You might be thinking to yourself, what does all this mean? Well, I'll show you what it means. It means that crafts like this are impossible. They can't achieve warp speeds as much as you wish that they could. It's a real shame. Maybe eventually I'll work out the kinks in the design. My version of the Kraken Drive is actually reusable. So there's that. That's about all it has above other Kraken Drives though. The DLC makes Kraken Drives way easier to make. So I've heard. I don't have it. Anyways, that's all I know about Kraken Drives. If you know anything that I don't, make sure to comment below. As always, I've been Lord Pasta, and have a good day.